Modern-day South America is already a land of extremes, with the Amazon's untamed depths and the towering peaks of the Andes. But that's nothing compared to the prehistoric nightmare that once reigned here. Picture a land where monstrous birds dominated as apex predators. Rodents were the size of rhinos and giant ground sloths lumbered across the landscape like tanks. This was a world where every step could be your last. A realm where nightmares weren't just stories, but living, breathing beasts. Welcome to prehistoric South America, the ultimate arena where terror went into overdrive. This wasn't just a continent, but nature's twisted laboratory. For millions of years, it brewed horrors in isolation. Then, 2.8 million years ago, it collided with North America, triggering the Great American Biotic Interchange. This cataclysmic event birthed monsters beyond imagination, each more terrifying than the last. This was the unforgiving Pleistocene, where fear ruled the land. One of the most notorious was the forest racids, better known as the Terror Birds, a name they truly lived up to. Imagine a bird standing up to 3 meters or 10 feet tall, weighing in at a whopping 150 kilos or 330 pounds, with a head the size of a horse's and a beak like a pickaxe. This was a lean, mean killing machine that ruled South America for over 60 million years. The star of this nightmarish avian show was Kalenkin Guillermoi, the largest known terror bird. This feathered nightmare stood as tall as a grown man, on stilts. Its beak alone was over 45 centimeters or 18 inches long, curved like a deadly hook, and strong enough to crack bones like they were peanut shells. If there's one mercy from nature, it's that these terror birds couldn't fly. But who needs wings when you're at the top of the food chain? Instead, they used their powerful legs to chase down prey at speeds reaching up to 48 kilometers per hour, or 30 miles per hour, making them relentless hunters on the ground. Once they caught up to their unfortunate victim, that massive beak would come crashing down, either killing the prey outright or grabbing and shaking it to death. And if you think you could outsmart these feathered fiends, studies suggest that terror birds had excellent binocular vision and hearing. They were the complete package, fast, strong, and smart. So, you should be grateful that birds today are mostly content with just stealing your picnic sandwiches. But lurking just beneath the murky waters of prehistoric South America was an even greater threat, one that turned the swamps into a nightmare graveyard, feared even by the terror birds themselves. This was the monstrous serpent Titanoboa that took Ophidiophobia to the extreme. Stretching up to 13 meters or 43 feet in length and weighing over a ton, Titanoboa was not just the largest snake ever to exist, it was a living nightmare. Imagine a serpent nearly twice the length of a modern green anaconda, with the girth of an oil drum moving with the stealth of a jungle predator. This massive snake had one goal, to squeeze and swallow anything in its path. Its crushing strength was so immense that it could constrict prey with a force exceeding 400 pounds per square inch, enough to collapse the bones of large mammals, crocodiles, and anything unfortunate enough to cross its path. Unlike today's large constrictors that favor dry habitats, Titanoboa thrived in the steamy, swampy regions of what is now northern South America. It ruled these waters with unmatched dominance, blending seamlessly into the murky surroundings as it lay in ambush. Submerged with only its eyes and nostrils visible, it waited for the perfect moment to strike. The moment a giant turtle or primitive crocodile wandered too close, Titanoboa would explode into action, wrapping its enormous coils around its target squeezing until every bone cracked and life was drained away. On top of that, paleontologists suggest that Titanoboa's size allowed it to regulate its body temperature more efficiently, making it a dominant predator in the tropical Paleocene environment. And unlike smaller snakes that rely heavily on heat to stay active, Titanoboa could hunt day or night, turning South America's swamps into a no-go zone, no matter the time of day. Venturing out into the Pleistocene wilderness, along comes Smilodon, the saber-toothed cat that turned big-game hunting into an art form. Despite what you might think, Smilodon wasn't a tiger. It was something far more extreme. This wasn't just a big cat with impressive dental work. It was nature's ultimate killing machine, gift-wrapped in fur and attitude. Smilodon populator, the largest known species of saber-toothed cat, was the size of a modern lion on steroids. We're talking about a predator that could tip the scales at up to 400 kilograms or 880 pounds. Its canines were like twin daggers, growing up to 28 centimeters or 11 inches long. These protruding teeth were not just for show, they were serrated on the edge, transforming each bite into a sawing action, capable of invoking terror in even the darkest of nightmares. 
As for how it managed to eat with such formidable teeth, paleontologists believe Smilodon could open its jaw to a 120-degree angle, effectively transforming its mouth into a highly efficient killing tool, similar to a bear trap. But Smilodon wasn't just about the teeth. This predator was a powerhouse equipped with front legs as thick as tree trunks and shoulders built for sheer strength. With this immense power, it targeted prey much larger than itself, likely striking from ambush and using its muscular limbs to wrestle victims to the ground. Once the prey was overpowered, those saber teeth would come into play, delivering a killing bite to the throat or belly. Interestingly, Smilodon's bite force was actually weaker than that of modern lions. However, before you let out a sigh of relief, Smilodon didn't rely on bite strength. Those saber teeth did all the work. It's like comparing a sledgehammer to a scalpel. Both will ruin your day, but one is far more precise about it. While it wasn't built for long chases like modern cheetahs, Smilodon excelled as an ambush predator. It could accelerate rapidly over short distances, turning any attempt at escape into a swift and fatal encounter. And not to mention, perhaps the most unsettling thing about Smilodon was its social behavior. Evidence suggests these cats might have lived and hunted in groups, much like modern lions. Imagine a whole pride of these saber-toothed terrors working together to bring down prey. Speaking of creatures with supersized features, if you thought modern-day sloths were just adorable, slow-moving balls of fur, Megatherium will shatter that image in an instant. This giant ground sloth that turned the concept of sloth into something that would give you pause and possibly nightmares. We're talking about a creature that stood up to six meters or 20 feet tall when rearing up on its hind legs. Weighing in at four tons, Megatherium was heavier than most elephants. While it was a herbivore, this behemoth was equipped with curved claws up to 45 centimeters or 18 inches long, making it no less dangerous than any predator. These claws were used for everything from pulling down branches to possibly defending itself against predators. And much like modern anteaters, Megatherium had a tongue that could extend far beyond its mouth. Picture a tongue several feet long, controlled by powerful muscles, capable of wrapping around branches and stripping them clean of leaves. And although Megatherium wasn't exactly built for speed, it likely moved faster than you'd expect for a creature of its size. Sitting on top of all its impressive stats, this giant had a large brain relative to its body size, suggesting a level of intelligence that made it a truly formidable beast. In fact, Megatherium likely contended with the giant short-faced bear, Arctotus simus, one of the most fearsome predators of the Pleistocene. These encounters likely occurred near watering holes or foraging grounds, where the two would compete over access to resources. The short-faced bear would have been drawn to areas where herbivores like Megatherium gathered to feed or drink. The Megatherium would have had to defend itself, using its enormous claws to ward off the apex predator much like how African buffalo use their strength and horns to fend off lion attacks today. Now, this next creature made a huge contribution to the nightmarish aspect of prehistoric South America, specifically for any predators that dared to make a meal out of it. Meet Glyptodon, a member of the group known as Glyptodonts, relatives of modern armadillos. This creature could grow up to 3.3 meters or 11 feet long and weigh up to two tons or 4,000 pounds. That's about the size of a small car. The most striking feature of Glyptodon was, of course, its shell. The carapace was made up of over 1,000 bony plates, each about an inch thick, fused together to form an incredibly durable dome. This shell was so sturdy that some paleontologists believe it could have withstood the bite of even the fiercest predators of the time. Glyptodon wasn't just content with being a living fortress, it took things up a notch with a tail that worked like a medieval mace. This armored tail wasn't just for fending off predators. It also came in handy during fights with rivals. In fact, Glyptodon wasn't the peaceful grazer you might expect. Rather, it was highly territorial, and fossils with healed fractures on their shells suggest these giants frequently fought among themselves over territory, mates, or food. These tail-clubbing duels made Glyptodon a tough opponent, even against its own kind. While Glyptodon had very few natural enemies, its only real vulnerabilities lay in its underbelly and the joints of its limbs, which were not covered by armor. It could only hope that no predator would ever manage to flip it upside down. However, flipping a two-ton animal to get to those weak spots was no easy task. Even the most agile predators had to tread carefully, as Glyptodon could pivot rapidly and lash out with its club tail. Any predator unlucky enough to misjudge the animal's reach could suffer shattered bones or worse, 
making Glyptodon one of the most frustrating and dangerous targets in prehistoric South America. With all the chaos on land, you'd think it would be a great idea to find some peace in a calm river, only to find yourself face to face with the largest known member of the crocodilian family, complete with an anger management issue, the Purosaurus. We're talking about a reptile that could grow up to 12.5 meters or 41 feet long and weigh up to 8.4 tons or 18,500 pounds, making Purosaurus even heavier than a T-Rex. Its skull alone was taller than most humans, reaching up to 1.7 meters or 5.5 feet in length. And it wasn't just enormous. It was packed with teeth up to 18 centimeters or 7 inches long, perfect for crunching through anything unfortunate enough to cross its path. And not to mention, with its thick, armored skin that could have probably deflected spears like they were toothpicks and a powerful tail that allowed it to glide through the water with surprising speed, this reptile was like an unstoppable juggernaut, with the perfect combination of strength and agility to dominate its environment. Its diet likely consisted of large mammals, turtles, fish, and possibly even other crocodilians. Similar to Titanoboa, it would lie in wait, mostly submerged, with just its eyes and nostrils above the water. And just when its target moved close enough, it would launch an ambush. Imagine being a prehistoric deer, just trying to get a drink from the river. When suddenly the water erupts and eight tons of nope comes flying at you with the speed of a freight train and the appetite of a black hole. And while Purosaurus was primarily aquatic, it could likely move on land as well. So even a stroll along the prehistoric Amazon riverbank wasn't safe from this supersized caiman. Modern crocodilians are much smarter than they're given credit for, showing complex social behaviors and even using tools. Now, add that to the already nightmarish Purosaurus, and its mere existence was a terrifying blend of brute strength and surprising intelligence. At this point, you might have given up staying on land, hoping the ocean was your last chance of survival. But the marine creatures were just as terrifying, best exemplified by the Megalodon. Prehistoric South America's coastlines were the perfect hunting grounds for this apex predator. And when you're talking about a shark the size of a school bus, you make room on the list. Autodus megalodon was the largest shark ever to grace our oceans. When it came to prey, this apex predator was anything but picky. Megalodon's diet likely included whales, seals, sea turtles, and other large marine animals. Scientists believe it may have employed sophisticated hunting strategies, such as attacking the fins of large whales to immobilize them before going in for the kill. As for its sheer size, Megalodon could grow up to 18 meters or 60 feet long and weigh up to 50 tons, and those teeth could reach up to 18 centimeters or 7 inches, which, if you compare it with a great white shark's tooth, is about three times larger, showing just how monstrous this predator truly was. Yet perhaps the most unsettling aspect of Megalodon was its bite force, Estimates suggest it could chomp down with up to 40,000 pounds per square inch, making it one of the most powerful bite forces ever recorded in any animal, living or extinct. And if you thought you could escape this prehistoric powerhouse by sticking to shallow waters, think again. While adult megalodons probably stayed in deeper waters, juveniles likely used coastal areas as nurseries. So even paddling in the prehistoric South American shallows wasn't safe from baby megalodons which, by the way, were likely still the size of a modern great white shark at birth. With all the terrors prehistoric South America had to offer, even the rodents were supersized. Enter Joseph Artigasia munisi, a rodent the size of a buffalo. Weighing 2,200 pounds, or a ton, and standing five feet tall, it was the largest rodent ever to scurry across the earth. This rodent was built like a furry tank, with a robust body that could likely shrug off attacks from most predators. While its powerful legs suggest it had enough strength for short bursts of speed, its large size would have limited it from being a fast runner. Instead of relying on speed, Josepho Artigasia likely used its bulk and defensive abilities to hold its ground against threats. Like all rodents, Joseph Artigasia had ever-growing incisors. Its upper teeth could grow over 30 centimeters or one foot long, and any predator ignorant enough to attack would likely face a bone-crushing bite of up to 1,400 pounds per square inch which is comparable to a modern-day tiger, or even higher. This powerful bite allowed it to shred through tough vegetation, though some scientists suggest these teeth may have also been used for digging, much like how elephants use their tusks. Joseph Ortigasia was likely an herbivore. However, 
A creature of this size required massive amounts of vegetation daily to survive, making it a dominant presence in its environment. Much like modern beavers alter their surroundings by building dams, this giant rodent likely transformed its habitat simply by existing, shaping the landscape as it fed and moved. And yet, despite these formidable conditions, humans eventually arrived in this prehistoric crucible and not only survived, but thrived. Our ancestors looked at a land filled with giant predatory birds, mega rodents, and armored beasts and thought, this seems like the perfect place to settle. Shifting our focus to a place not too far from this continent, North America was home to even more deadly predators and colossal beasts, where survival was far from guaranteed. Which was truly more nightmarish? Find out by checking out our next video right here. And as always, thank you for watching.